Hello. Inner dialogue. The language that we use on ourselves. I've been involved in three big projects today and all of them, coincidentally or not, have been all around the inner dialogue and the language we tell ourselves. It's extremely liberating to be at the position I am now where my inner dialogue is automatic. Therefore, my outer dialogue is automatic as well. It's one of those things that just has become my life. There isn't anything to choose, consciously decide on, or even consider. It just is 100% authentically me. This wasn't always the case though. There's been many times in my history, my short history, where inner dialogue was very, very dark and very, very overwhelming, overpowering. I was living in shadows. I used to listen to other people's opinions of me. I used to believe that I needed to act a certain way in order to fit in. I used to lower my functioning in order to fit in, in order to try and blend. I don't do that anymore. I'm liberated. I'm emotionally free. I have an enormous sense of freedom running through every cell of my body now. I'm illness and disease free. My holistic health is very, very high standard all the time. And these things are just automatic. So how did I get from living with fear, overwhelming dark shadows, other people's voices, the polar opposite of how I am now. How did I get from that place to my current position of thriving, really happy, celebrating magic that is all around me all the time, flowing through me, sharing with my loved ones, celebrating life in nearly every moment and just the a huge sense of gratitude is just wonderful now. So how did I get from that quite dark place to where I am now? Inner dialogue. Inner dialogue is the starting point. Now how I usually teach this is in a three-step process, one, two, three. So feel it, think it, then do it. So in every situation, first we must feel our way. Then we must think. Thinking involves your response. So think about how you're going to respond to the situation. And then do an action. It really is that simple. Feel it. Think it, do it, in all things. It serves me very, very well. And the reason why I wanted to share this with you today is because this has come up repeatedly for me recently. I've seen people, especially people in close proximity to myself, with the concentrated format that we're all enjoying each other's company at the moment. But I've seen a sort of a spiral going on where they want to do something. It, that's straightforward. They have felt the urge to do something. Then they thought about it and previously learned subconscious beliefs and patterns 
of behaviour have crept in and therefore instead of thinking about how they're going to execute their decision to do this thing, this great idea that's arrived, they've all these other thoughts have come in. And then so when we get to the doing part, all the action that they're capable of doing is displaying annoyance or even anger, lashing out. And they, they genuinely have been left with a sense of feeling, which is that they couldn't do the one thing that they wanted to do in the first place. So then the thinking starts again and they're assigning blame. It must be the, the fault of circumstances or the people around them. And then the action is self-loathing because really they wanted to do this thing. So then they feel really bad and then they think that they're really bad and then they think there's something wrong with them and then the action is doing nothing. And then the feeling is self-loathing. The, the thinking is, why did I even think of that idea? And then the action is do nothing, self-pity. And then this is a cycle and it just goes round and round and round. Now we can choose how we feel about things, circumstances, situations and people in every moment. And then we can think how we want to act and then act in every moment. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Now, if I feel like I need to clean my teeth, I'm going to think, oh, I need a toothbrush. Then I'm going to get up and get my toothbrush and toothpaste probably and go and clean my teeth. So I have felt like I needed to clean my teeth. I've then thought about the action and then I've got up and done the action. It's just like when you first wake up in the morning and you feel like you need to go to the toilet. You lay there for a minute, you think, you feel, oh, I need to go to the toilet. Then you think, oh, I really need to get up. And then you just get up. So you've had a feeling, you've had a thought, then you've done an action. Or you'd wet the bed. Maybe. I've been there in the past <laughs> when I was really ill. So, yeah, so... In every situation, this simple one, two, three step can be applied. And obviously, you know, those of you who know me, you know that I do this three step process all the time, all day, every day, nights too, with a smile on my face. Now, the analogy I like to use, and I do use this frequently with clients and even in my personal life, I can hand you a cactus. It doesn't mean that you have to be sitting on it all the time. And you don't need to be a cactus towards other people, situations, circumstances. You can consciously choose to feel, think and act in every single situation. Now the inner dialogue comes in and is very very important because this affects your cellular level your health your emotional health it creates blockages within the body if you don't get this right feeling so you feel you need to do something you feel like there's a goal you feel like there's a dream you feel like there's love you feel something then you think what do i need to do now the thinking part is where the inner dialogue comes in because it's very very easy to talk yourself out of doing things because of previous negative programmed subconscious beliefs then the doing part is dependent on the thinking part so feeling thinking doing We learn our subconscious beliefs and our subconscious programming. Quite a lot of it happens before the age of seven when we're in the theta brainwave state, when our brains are 
at their highest state of learning. But there is absolutely no reason why we cannot adopt the theta brainwave state right now in our adult lives as well. And this goes for any age, could be nine months, could be 99, 199, you know, whatever, it could be any age. You can develop that learning process and learn about yourself. What thoughts do you have that creep in on a regular basis that prevent you from thinking and acting once you've had a feeling or a desire to want to do something? It is very, very easy to have a feeling and then all your thoughts just go haywire and they're just one big massive melting pot of confusion. And then the actions are really negative that follow. It doesn't have to be that way. Life is a, an infinite gift. We are very, very blessed and very, very fortunate to have a life. And to be sharing it together. We're all alive at the same time right now. I did have a bereavement in my family last week. My my beautiful cousin. Just a few months younger than me. Um, she died in her husband's arms. In the middle of the night. Just after 3.30am. A week ago. And it was pretty hard. To feel my way through that news. But once I did address how I really felt, I was then able to think clearly and then able to do actions like this. You know, I, I've been teaching today. I've been inspiring people to be in control of their emotions with the one, two, three step process of feeling, thinking, then doing. Number one, feeling. Number two, thinking. Number three, doing. So feel, think, act. So I've been teaching this today and it's been a huge learning for me. So by teaching, I'm learning because I'm feeling all the time how better to improve my language skills. Um, you know, I have masses of professional qualifications. I have three degrees. I have hundreds of associated certificates, MSCs and all kinds of credentials. However, I've had an enormous amount of emotional trauma in my early years, childhood, early adult life and, you know, recent adult life. A lot of that involved illness, but it was all emotional trauma and I have deep rooted sexual trauma, sexual violence as well in the past. What tends to happen with trauma is a fairly basic human response. When you get confused or overwhelmed, you revert back to the age you were mentally before your first experience of trauma was subconsciously programmed into your, your subconscious mind and your overall being. So for me, that was actually below the age of seven. So quite often times in my adult life, I have become overwhelmed through various day-to-day, -day just regular activities. I've become overwhelmed in the past. Therefore, when anybody tried to talk to me with an academic sounding set of words, or the words were long, or the words just felt complicated, or the words felt like words that as a child I wouldn't be able to spell or get my tongue round, a tongue twist, a length of them, some of them with several syllables. And, you know, I became overwhelmed and confused. So in my professional life and in my, as a transformational mentor and self-love architect, you know, uh, inspiring people to build their own building blocks, to formulate their own lives, and just fly within the magic that is life. I don't use any complex language. Therefore, in order to teach, it's been a huge learning curve for me because, you know, I, I actually really like feeling quite childlike and innocent. 
and like the world is full of awe and wonder and magicalness and sparkles and glitter and fairies and just all special things. I like feeling like that. So for me, once upon a time, it was a conscious choice to hold on to that for dear life and not let that be ground out of me by social conditioning and pressures and the professional world that I suddenly plummeted within. So I've, I've 100% made a conscious choice that some point in my adult life to stay like this and stay smiling sincerely and quite magical. You know, I, I made a choice. And now I'm my me as my future self now, I'm my future self from back then when I made that decision. I'm a hundred percent thankful that I did that because it means that I don't get overwhelmed, I don't get disheartened, and I don't get all the adulting traumatic emotions and traumatic feelings associated with my life anymore and I think that, that that has been a game changer for me to hold on to the awe and wonder and magic that is life because life is magical. One of the number one questions I have been asked fairly frequently in during 2020 since the start of the year, do I really believe that life is magical and life is love and love is free flowing of course i do of course i do i 100 percent hand on heart really do life is magical and imagine if you're looking at life through the eyes of a small child just everything is is just there and you want to achieve st stuff you want to be involved in stuff you want to do things my last child, my youngest child, is going to be 13 in July. But I vividly, I mean, they all went through this. You know, he's the youngest of six. But when he was, when he was about one, his biggest goal in life was being big. He wanted to be big like his brothers and sister. Sisters. Three brothers and two sisters. He wanted to be big. He wanted to stand, he wanted to walk, he wanted to roll around the floor with them, he wanted to play with their toys, he wanted to do stuff with them. So he used to do this thing where he, he'd, I'd put him on the carpet, cause, you know, it's the safest place for a baby when they're fully active is on the floor. They can't fall on the floor, or not fall from a height anyway. And so I used to put him down on the floor if I was, if I had something to do myself, and, I, and I'd, I'd be doing this thing and keeping an eye on him. And he would just be raising himself up onto his little legs and standing and then falling, then standing, then falling, then standing, then falling. Until one day, you know, he stood and then he took a step and he took another step. Then he took, and the excitement, the excitement and the magic that filled the room, it was just incredible. And so looking at the world, I'm not saying look at the world through the eyes of a one-year-old. That's not what I'm saying. But just learn to observe how you're viewing the world around you. Because in my world, everything is perfect. Everything is magical. When something comes along that threatens that, I, I have found myself feeling fierce then I've been thinking do I need to defend this then I've been acting by speaking I don't want this in my life I don't need this I don't want to feel this and I've used specific language to make sure that my words are understood there is nothing wrong with being me and I consciously choose to be me at all times and that means that I'm 100% in tune with all my feelings there's no stored emotions through doing this one two three step process there's no stored emotion energetically the energy flow through my body 
is really strong and really fluid all the time. My vibrational output is very, very high. It's, it's usually resonating above 700, degree, uh, 700 megahertz every day. The reason that I don't absorb negative emotions and negative uh, feelings is because I, let, I allow them to flow and I allow them to pass through with my feeling, thinking, doing three-step process. And it's key to not store negative emotions and negative feelings. So you have a feeling, you decide to have a negative emotion, then you're just taking it all within. And this can be very damaging to the body. At cellular level, cellular even, at cellular level, the body absorbs what you give it, what you feed it. And if you are feeding your body negative emotions, then that it creates blockages within the body at cellular level. And you start to develop symptomatic problems throughout the body. So quite a big one is um, some people develop irritable bowels or gut issues. And when these are compounded, you keep on putting in negative emotions, you keep on feeding, you keep on feeling, you keep feeling negative, you keep feeling emotions. These just amass over time and create chronic illness, chronic fatigue, exhaustion, less than vibrant. You'll be operating, your body will be operating on a less than vibrant level. So it's very, very, very important, the language that we feed our inner selves. What is without? So capital O-U-T, what is without on the outside, has a major, major effect within, with a capital I-N. As is without, is within. It is very, very important to remember this. I have been through a tremendous amount of trauma in my life which includes an extremely aggressive rape and sexual assault where my body was jumped on, stamped on, kicked and my abdominal cavity burst. I lost several internal organs and I was paralysed for seven years. Now, I'm intensely in love with life. I no longer carry that experience as if it's part of me because it isn't who I am. I consciously choose to be me and that is full of love, full of magic, the least amount of labels possible to get by. Social conditioning dictates that we use labels on a fairly consistent regular basis and oftentimes when I have those feelings Oh, I've got to use labels again. You know, that's a feeling. And then the thought is, do I though? And then the action is just being me. By simply being, I can simply be. So in answer to the question, do I feel as if life is magical and full of love? Yes, I do. Yes, I 100% do. And do you know what the universe has rewarded me with? A life partner that feels exactly the same way. I mean, I'm still feeling a certain degree of shock on that one. And in my childlike way, I have said things like, you may need to keep reminding me of, you know, of magic. You may need to keep telling me repeatedly because the whole thing is just a shock. It's a magnificent shock and I welcome every second. But it's a shock all the same. But instead of running from it and instead of being fearful of it, I've embraced every second and therefore life is pretty magical. Pretty amazing. I have my family. The last time I did a video I mentioned to you that my dad wasn't well. Well, he's recovered and he's a lot better now. And he called me two days ago and he sounded radiant. And so my feeling, one, two, three step process was, I felt, 
his voice. Um, he sounded really radiant. I thought, this is fantastic. We need a celebration. My action, my doing part, was I went downstairs and I cooked a fabulous meal and I sat down around the table with my family and we celebrated the fact that their grandfather was better. And whilst we were doing that, we were sharing parts of ourselves, parts of our day. Now, I know that we're all in the house, but, you know, if we're all sharing the same moment. There are six people in my home presently. Now, in this moment, we're all sharing the moment, but all separately. So we all have a separate experience of this moment. That's pretty, that's pretty magical if you think about it. One moment, six people, all six of us having a very, very unique, different experience. So again, today, I feel magical, I feel radiant, I feel illuminated. I think I should do something special. One of my passions is cooking. That's probably my biggest passion, actually, if I'm totally honest. So I'm going to go and cook a big meal after I finish my, my Padarko tea. And the action will be me cooking the meal and then sitting and celebrating life and enjoying it with my family, with the other five people in my home. And we can talk about this moment. I can say to them, oh, did you watch my video? Um, I spoke about the moment when I was making it and... Now, what what was you doing in that moment? You know, and we can share our unique momentary experience. If we were both standing side by side, you and I, with a camera each, and we both took a photo of an object in front of us, both the photos would have unique differences. Your eyes are your cameras. Your soul is the dark room that processes the film. What you feed your body, it comes through here, comes through here, comes through your soul, comes through your mind, comes through your mouth. Be mindful of your inner language. You are beautiful. Life is magic. I'd really like you to start really trying to feel into that really try to process what I'm saying here. Life is magical. If I stopped for one moment to consider some of the things I've been through, especially the sexual trauma and being having been paralysed for seven years and, you know, all the illness and everything that followed, would I be able to sit here smiling like this? But I like having energy flow. I, I like having... A childlike fantasy that everything's beautiful. Of course I do. The alternative is to sit and think. It's all my fault. This thing was done to me. I didn't choose it. It's so dark. It's so overwhelming. I want to die. That was where I used to be. With it. That didn't feel very nice. This moment feels really nice. The fact that I am alive, thriving, illness and disease free. I'm super healthy, getting thinner by the day. I like that. I like that I'm in the house, doing everything in the house, working in my garden, maybe going for a short walk. I, I love the fact that my body's responding in the way that you know, it's, it's surpassing my wildest dreams. Um, the pollen count is quite high today, so my nose has been tingling a bit. But even that feels really funny. It's like there's like a thousand fairies dancing on my face. And I, I did sprinkle glitter on so that I could, you know, see their footprints. Why not? Why not? Why can't I have, you know, magical thoughts like that? You know, my my partner was feeling quite sad the other day because we you know we're, we're quite a few couple of thousand miles distance between us uh, physically um, and he was feeling quite sad you know because he, he just wants he just wants us to be together and I want that as well 
And he, you know, I made him smile and the smile was so big and so radiant. I said to him, you know, 500 or, or more fairies were just born when you gave that radiant, authentic smile. And he smiled even bigger and I went, oh my goodness, another 500. I said, don't you know that? Don't you know that? When you smile sincerely and, and love is bursting out, bursting out of every pore. Don't you know that? Particles of magic just go flooding out into the world. And they will reach people. Those tiny little particles will reach people. And touch people. Just like I'm doing now. So being mindful of your inner language, your inner dialogue. It's actually the biggest volume of soul food. At, which will affect you at cellular level, molecular level, vibrational level, energetic level. All the important ones. Feed your soul first, then your body will follow. So feed your soul first. Be mindful of what you're putting in. Embrace everything. Understand that life is magic. It's a magical gift. It's a miracle, in fact. It's a miracle that you are here. And I am here in this moment. And we're sharing this moment. It's a miracle. The chances of it happening, if you really broke it down scientifically and wrote it out in a chart and a graph and a pie chart and all those other kind of testing diagram type things, I, I forget the word, yeah, my childlike brain, I forget the word. If you were to scientifically diagnose it and put it all down on paper, the chances of you and I sharing this moment are pretty, pretty, pretty slim. Probably the size of a tiniest piece of glitter like I have on my cheeks. So that's a miracle in itself. It's a miracle in itself that you're sa you're here with me to be sharing this moment. Life is magic. You have to forgive my childlike brain sometimes because, you know, I'm going to be 50 at the start of August. I'm but a mere infant considering I'm going to make it for another 50 years and beyond. So once upon a time when they told me I was, I'd be dead within 100 days, so to be able to sit here now and say, I'm just, in, I'm in my infancy. I have 50 more plus years to go still. So therefore it's my feeling that I need to keep my body super, super healthy. And it starts with my thoughts. My thoughts are pretty magical. Therefore, what state do you think my body's in? Magical state of being, yes? And it's totally, totally is. And I couldn't be happier, couldn't be more proud, couldn't be more vulnerable, humble. And just simply being. I'd like you all to consider standing in front of a mirror and saying, I'm happy to be me. And really feel that. Utilise the one, two, three step process. Really feel you're happy to be you. Think of something to celebrate that and just do it. That's what I wish for you. So you can feel some of the magic that I'm feeling all the time, all day, every day. It's been a pleasure talking with you today. My name is Helen Rose Carlia Jacobs. I am a self-love architect, which is another way of saying transformational mentor. I teach people with building blocks to design their own life after they've got access to their own blueprints and really feel who they truly are, their true authentic selves. And then building blocks to build the life that you design, that you truly want, just like I am. And like I said before, I really have been through some horrendous experiences in my past, but that's all they were experiences. And if I can thrive and fully hand on heart believe that life is magic and be so in love with everything, so in love with every second of every day and smiling so sincerely, then you can too. And the key from, from being inspired by someone who's walked the path before you, 
means that they understand every step of the way that you're about to take. I don't, I no longer believe that we should assign the word journey to life because life is life. Whether you choose to accept life or not, life is happening right now in every moment for you, with you. Is it with your cooperation or with your resistance? So make the conscious decision today to embrace a set of moments, feel them, truly feel them. Think of an action and then just go for it. Feel the magic, feel the love and just be you. It's okay to just be you at all times. <laughs>